Hello and welcome back. This is part three of our centroid discussion. Uh, in this video, we are going to take what we've learned from parts one and two about centroids and how to calculate the centroids of some basic shapes, and we're going to see how to combine all of that information to find the centroid of a more complex shape. Often our shapes are not just simple rectangles or triangles or circles, so we need to do more. So to do the centroid of a complex shape, we're going to use these equations right here. Um, so our centroid, once again, has an x location and a y location. And we can set that however we want. I always like to say x is my left and right, y is my up and down. And for a complex shape, our equation is like this. x bar is equal to the sum. This sigma symbol here is, is simulating a math or it stands for the sum, so we're adding together our individual uh, shapes, x bar, times our individual shapes, area, and we, we multiply those, and then we multi uh, add it to the next shape, and then the following shape, and then we add or divide that by the sum of all of the areas of our shapes. And we do the same thing for y, and for our y bar location. Now what do I mean by um, our shapes, well, what I mean by that is we have to look at our total area here and div divvy that up into shapes that we know how to calculate the centroid of. So you could do this multiple ways. Um, you might see it differently than I do, but how I'm going to do it for this example is I'm going to split it up into three shapes. So I'll have a shape right here. So this is my shape number one rectangle one and then here is my next shape I'm gonna do right here this will be shape number two and this will be shape number three now there are like, like I said there's many ways to do this problem in fact I'll show a different way to do this problem in my next video um, but for this we're gonna take these three shapes and we're gonna add the centroids or use the centroids of all of these to find the centroid of our overall shape so let's break that down and then what I like to do for these problems to help me keep things straight is I like to create a little chart because I think that helps me stay organized so I'm gonna say X bar Y bar and area and then I'm gonna have shape 1 shape 2 and shape 3 all right in here. And we'll figure out the X bar, the Y bar, and the area of each of these shapes. So we'll start with number one, because that'll be the most straightforward. And as I've said before, I always want to make sure I start here as a zero, zero point. Um, it keeps helps keep me organized. I assume that everything is in what can be considered the first quadrant, I guess, if you're thinking of it as a graph sheet of graph paper. So all of our numbers end up being positive. Um, so here's my zero, zero, and we use the relative position of each shape to this zero point. And that's important to keep in mind, and you'll see what I mean here when I get to my next shapes. So for shape one, shape one touches my zero point, so I can just go right from there. And again, maybe that's confusing, but we'll see as we go on. So for shape one, my x bar, since this is a rectangle, my x bar is base over 2. So for shape 1, my base is 3. So this rectangle right here, my base is 3. So I'll do 3 over 2 to get 1.5. I'll make a little line here to separate our areas. Okay. For my y bar for shape 1, it's h over 2, well my height is 6, so I'll do h over 2 equals 6 over 2, so my y bar is equal to 3 inches. And then we finally need the area of that shape, well the area of a rectangle is base times height equals 6 times 3, so we get our area to be 18 inches. Maybe I'll do it this way, inches squared. 
three inches, one and a half inches. Okay, there we go. So there's shape one. Let's do shape two. So for shape two, what we need to do is first we need to get ourselves to the location that we're at. So if we're talking about the centroid of shape two, I need to start at my right angle, but my right angle starts over from zero. So I always need to do the absolute location of this. So what I mean by that is I'm starting actually not at zero, but I'm starting at three. So here's my location of three. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna write that my centroid is actually starting at three plus whatever my centroid location is. So my centroid location is going to be the base over three of my rectangle or triangle. Well, since the total is six and then this to this point was three, I know that my base of my triangle has to be three. So I'll do base over three equals, I'll write it down here, three over three. So three plus three divided by three is one. So I get my location of my centroid to be four. Now again, three over three is my actual centroid calculation, but I'm starting at point three. You can think of it again like a graph. So I'm starting at point three, so I have to add my centroid location to where I'm actually located in reference to my zero point. So three plus my centroid calculation of three over three is four, okay? For my centroid location of the height of this, again, I'm up from the bottom. My zero point's on the bottom here. I start up three. So again, I'm gonna go three plus height over three to get my answer, or my um, equation. So I'll do three plus, again, my height. So I would go up three to right here. My total is six, so I know that the height of my triangle is three. Three plus three over three, again, is going to be four inches. And the area of a triangle is base times height over two. And so I'm going to do uh, three times three over two to get an area of 4.5 inches squared. Running out of paper there, okay? 4.5 inches squared for my area of that one. And my third one is a square, three by three. But once again, I have to make sure I'm using the absolute location. All right, I'm back. Uh, sorry, I had to pause my video. I'm staying recording this with my son at home sick today and he just woke up from a nap. So if I remember right, I think I'm at number three, and I was talking about how, once again, we have to worry about number three being in its actual location. So from when we're talking about our X bar, we start from our zero point, and once again, we need to know that we're starting at three. So I'm going to start by writing three plus, and I will say base over two. So I have three plus, and once again, since this overall is six and I'm starting at three, I know that my base of my third shape has to be the same as the base of my triangle, which is three. So I have three plus three over two. So my X bar for this one ends up being, uh, three over two is one and a half, so 4.5 inches. And my Y bar, since three, this uh, shape three is on, starting on the bottom, this is easier this time, so I don't have to go up at all. I just can use the base. So my height of this is three over two, or is three inches, and so base over two, so three over two equals 1.5 inches, and my area is three by three. 3 by 3, which is 9 inches squared. All right, let's wrap this up. So to find x bar, um, let's write it over here so we have space. So to find x bar, it's going to be 
just like this equation up here says, if I move back a little bit, uh, maybe I'll run out of space. So I'll do x bar over here, sorry. It's the sum of the centroid of your first shape times the area of your first shape plus, in this case, so first shape times the area of our first shape plus the centroid of my second shape times the area of my second shape plus centroid of my third shape times the area of my third shape. And then I take all of that divided by area one plus area two plus area three. So how does this look? We'll say 1.5 times 18 plus uh, 4 times 4.5 plus 4.5 oops times 9 and all of that divided by 18 plus 4.5 plus 9. So, if we do that in our calculator, let's see if we can see this again. Once again, I like to make sure that I am plugging everything in using the proper parentheses. So, with my calculator, it's kind of nice because I can use my numbers easily. So, I'm going to do 1.5 times 18 plus... 4 times 4.5, and I know that order of operations should work out this way, but with calculators sometimes it's kind of funky, so we're just going to make sure we're using parentheses properly. 4.5 times 9. And when we do that, we get 85.5, and we're going to take that number divided by, and in parentheses I'll say 18 plus 4.5 plus 9, and I get 2.71 inches. So that is my x bar. Now for y bar, it's going to have a hard time showing up. Let me see if I can do this. It might look kind of funky and cut off some other stuff, but we'll make it work. Okay, y bar is going to be. 3, now we look at my three my y bar column, 3 times 18 plus 4 times 4.5 plus 1.5 times 9, all divided by, once again, just our areas added together, 18 plus 4.5 plus 9, and when I do all of that, if I use my calculator again, let's just show the work one more time. I do 3 times 18 plus 4 times 4.5 plus 1.5 times 9 equals divided by, look at that, I get 85.5 again. So if Let's just run through it, but I should get the same answer, plus 4.5, plus 9, and once again, I get 2.71 inches. So my x bar is 2.71, my y bar is also 2.71 for this entire shape. So there you have it. That is one way to do this. I'm going to do one more example. Um, but I'm going to end this video and I'll do another example in my next video showing yet another way to calculate this using the same equations. Um, but uh, we'll just show you one more way to do this so that we can wrap things up and you can have all of the options available to you when you are choosing to do these problems for your homework. So we'll see you in the next video.